Now, uh, full disclosure, you currently reside in what borough? The Bronx. The yeah. actual day. Okay. <laughs> I'm only telling y'all because if you see the drip, you'd wonder. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, this is your first novel. Tell us about it. Because it's super popular. Everyone I'm talking to, everyone I talk to, I was saying I'm having you on the show, and everyone's like, I read that book already. So what am I missing on? Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, so my first novel is about an imagined future in which convicted wards of state can opt out of a sentence of at least 25 years and participate in death matches. Mm. So it's really about abolition of the prison system, but in a fun way. <laughs> <laughs> So basically, incarcerated people can fight to the death to become free? They become gladiators and they're fighting for their freedom, yeah. Yeah, don't give Eric Adams that idea, man. I'm <laughs> Violet. This is a satirical book, Eric Adams, please. <laughs> is it hard to write a dystopian novel because we're kind of living in a dystopian novel right now? Bro, it is crazy to see it. I started this book about seven years ago, almost eight years ago. Mm -hmm. And in the process of writing it, you, I sort of watched the world become more and more aware of some of the things I was thinking about because it was coming more and more true. We're seeing just how heinous the system was in so many different ways. Right. And so it's, um, it's difficult, but also makes me feel like, you know, maybe I'm doing something that needs to be done. Got you. And now in your book, it's a for-profit prison system, yep. which is kind of similar to, I don't know, the NFL. Mm. Do you see any parallels there? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I think that in general, our sort of consumer culture, mm -hmm. where we have this idea where people's bodies are things for us to be entertained by, uh, we've gotten really comfortable just viewing humans as a means to an end, you know? Yeah. Or outside of it being a means to an end in and of themselves. So I think the NFL is particularly heinous. I think like that's like the big juggernaut of evil white men telling black bodies to go hurt yourself. But, uh... I mean... <laughs> talk that talk! <laughs> but, uh... I think that paradigm exists in a lot of other places, too. Got you, got you. And in this book, your protagonist is a black woman? Yes. Was that a conscious choice? Absolutely it was. I think that there's a particular way in which the black woman can be both respected but also disrespected in the same breath. I think if you think about Serena Williams, both Serena Williams and LeBron, for example, understand a particular way of existing in the world. But I think Serena understands something that's particular to her, which is always being sort of like disrespected or reduced to sexuality, her image, and so many other type of little weird little jabs that they give her. Mm -hmm. I think that that intersection of, of being a woman, being an athlete, being someone who's in the eye of the public, all those things felt important for this book. And so it made sense for the protagonist to be a woman. That makes sense. Okay, I recently hosted the gala for the Bronx Defenders. They're, yeah. from the, they're uh, public defenders in the Bronx. Yeah. Hence the name, duh. But your father is also a defense attorney? Yep, he was. Did that affect your view on the just uh, criminal justice? It absolutely, absolutely did. He told me about how um, he was in the middle of defending someone who had committed a murder. Gotcha. And I remember being, being like, dang, like, okay, I guess my father's a villain. Mm -hmm. He's a bad guy. And I remember him telling me, it's not that simple. And just in that little moment, I was probably like 11, 10-ish, uh, a little seed was planted that I think is a big part of how this book came to be. How satisfying does it feel to actually complete your first book? Oh my God, it's, um, it's the, the biggest reward, to be honest. The day where I sent it in and it was like done, done, yeah. done, done, uh, is bigger than any reward I can get. So I'm just grateful it's out there. I'm grateful people are reading it. I'm grateful people are thinking about the prison system and how we can maybe be more compassionate. So that's really the big gift. Okay. This might be a little disrespectful to you. Last question. <laughs> Mary Kill, Tony Morrison, Zora Neale Hurston, James Baldwin. Um, My English teacher's gonna kill me. Tony's the god, mm -hmm. so I wanna marry her. And then I feel bad to even say it. Oh. Zora Neale Hurston and I would have some relations. <laughs> <laughs>